Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Websites 101, presented by Beyond Indigo Pets and MWI. We'll begin in just a moment, but before we do, I want to call everyone's attention to the Q&A section of their Zoom webinar display. You'll be able to use this section to ask any questions you may have about the topic during the presentation. And at the end of the presentation, we'll make sure that we carve out some time to tackle all of your questions. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to today's speaker. Rachel Wiley is the Enterprise and Key Account Manager at Beyond Indigo Pets, specializing in veterinary marketing for corporations and for organizations. A graduate of the University of Arizona, she lives in New Braunfels, Texas with her husband, her two daughters, her dog, and of course, Popcorn the Cat. Take it away, Rachel. Thanks, Will, and hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be speaking with you today. Um, as Will mentioned, I am the Enterprise and Key Account Manager here at Beyond Indigo Pets, and that means that I see a lot of websites day in and day out, and I'm excited to share some of what we've learned with you today. In today's webinar, we'll be discussing the important role a website plays in your digital marketing efforts, what makes a website successful, and what to look for when you're choosing a website provider. So to begin, let's talk a little bit about why you need a website. And before we get started on kind of the ins and outs of why you personally need a website, I'd like to draw from kind of a life example. Let's say that we were all trying to go out and have brunch this morning, but we wanted to try someplace new. Where would you go to find information about a local brunch place? Well, you'd probably either pull out your phone or get on Google and try to type in, you know, a Google search for a brunch place near us. Well, if you don't have a website, you're missing out on all of those folks around you who are trying to find veterinarians near them. In addition, your website gives you a virtual lobby for digital visitors. So that way, before they've even been able to step foot in your door, they're able to kind of take a peek around at the way that you present yourself and at your own story. And as we talked about um, to begin with in our brunch example, this also creates a healthy connection to your SEO or your search efforts, as well as your reputation, because then through Google, obviously people are able to find that website and through sites like Yelp or even Google reviews or Google My Business, you're able to list your website there for folks who may be doing a different kind of search to find your website and learn more about you. Your website is also the best place for potential customers to get to know who you are and make that final decision to come see you. In short, all, your website brings more tales through your doors. So what should be included on a veterinary website? Being included in the website uh, business every day and kind of looking at the backside of analytics, we find that there are four key components that clients are coming to your website to learn more about you. And those can be summed up as who, what, when and where, and how. So the who of things. Who are you as a clinic? What's your story? What affiliations or credentials do you have that clients should know about? And from the client side of things, that's who's going to be seeing my pet? And also, who am I going to be interacting with when I come visit you? So let's look at some real life examples here. On my screen, we've got Southcare Animal Medical Center pulled up. And I know that we've got the location up here, but I want you to pretend like you didn't see that and see if you can get some context clues about who they are as a clinic and where they're located. On their website, they've got a nice about us section that is intended to tell you kind of their story. It's who we are, our history. There's a brief video, which is by no means um, required, but a nice additional touch to be able to include more about who they are as a company. In this About Us section too, which you'll see in a few slides over, they've also got a Meet Our Staff, which is where additionally where that who comes into play. Who are the people I'm going to be interacting with? Who's going to be talking to my pet and taking care of them? Kind of puts a face to the name, so to speak. So here is like that, that Meet Our Staff portion I was talking about, and here is that um, hospital tour as well that kind of gives you an idea of where you'll be going, who you'll be seeing, what that looks like, kind of the tone for the business, and telling that story in a visual way. Likewise, here's their homepage, which is another great way to visually tell that story. Now, when you work with a digital marketing company, they'll of course be helping you tell this story in a visual way, but some things to think about are photography, things that are unique to you that help clients get a sense for who you really are. So what Southcare has done here is 
even if we, I know we saw the location in the last slide, but here you can tell, you know, they've got an outdoor dog. Things are kind of in the wilderness, a little bit more outdoorsy feel. Um, they are located in Spokane, Washington, and this is actually the lead veterinarian's dog right here. So it's a really personal touch to say, we're just like you. We like doing things outdoors, kind of got that community feel for where they're located. We've also got their tagline here, pets and their people are our passion. So just by looking at their homepage, you get that sense of poo. Here's another example of a great photo that kind of tells the story about who I love this little guy. Um, again, they've got a very kind of outdoors oriented clientele and they wanted to you know, replicate that in what you're seeing on their website. Outdoorsy, going camping, taking your buddy with you. Here's another example from a different website. This is West Oaks, and he came to us with kind of a unique situation. He was taking over a practice that was already in existence, so he wanted a way to tell that story without kind of compromising what had already been in place. So we did that, of course, with text, similar to what um, Southcare did with the About Us text on, um, their, home, on their About Us page. Uh, but he added, meet our new team, so that way you know that there's some new management in place. And he wanted something a little bit more non-traditional. He didn't want to provide kind of the exact face as you would in kind of a staff page with um, headshots and written biographies. Instead, he wanted to give a little bit of information about who he is and where he comes from. But we created this little doodle, this little kind of an emoji of um, what he, Dr. John looks like, which I think is a really neat way to represent who you are as well. The next thing we'll talk about is what. Clients are wanting to know the what of things. And these are, what do you do? What services do you offer? And most importantly, what sets you apart or what makes you unique? Going back to our West Oaks example here, you can see that that services menu is readily accessible and you're easily able to see what he offers at his clinic. Those services include some of the standard things, right? wellness and preventive care, diagnostics, surgery, dentistry, but some aspects that may set him apart from competition in his area include services like allergy and dermatology, arthritis and pain management, boarding and grooming. We don't have to get too into details for clients, but if I know that my dog is having some you know, allergy problems here in Texas, it's nice to know that I can quickly look at his menu and know whether or not he has a service that meets my needs. This is another uh, Texas hospital here, Broadway Oaks. And looking at their services, again, we've got some fairly standard ones, dental, surgery, and diagnostics. But you'll notice that they also serve exotic pets, which is important in that what. What do you offer? So they do see exotic pets, which is um, visible as soon as you visit their homepage. And kind of going back to who, you can really get the who of who they are based on the photography that was chosen, the vibrancy in their logo, something else that is kind of unique about this design, and again, as a more what your digital marketing company would bring to the table, but a neat touch that I figured I'd point out. You can kind of see here on the right hand side where we have a little bit of a gap here that there's a little bit of a texture. And what the designer did here is added um, scales, feathers, and fur to represent the different clientele that they see as well. And you'll see a little bit more of that in a slide to come. We were also certain to bring out some of those unique aspects, on-site cremation, laser therapy, um, and again, those exotic pets. So that way, as soon as potential clients come to that homepage, they see the what of things. The next is fairly self-explanatory. If I'm visiting a website, of course, I want to know where and when. Where are you located? When are you open? And when do you see patients? And these can be different. Oftentimes veterinarians have hours, specific hours that they see patients, so the clinic may be open for things like refills or nurse visits at different times. So that's important to specify as well. Here's an example of what that might look like in practice. On the majority of Beyond Indigo sites, we include what's called a fat footer. And this is something that'll be on every page of the website, and that includes a brief map, an address, a phone number, an email if um, applicable, and all of the office hours. And here you can see those credentials as well included in that footer. The reason for that is we wanna make sure that whether it's the bottom of the page or the top of the page, if I'm scrolling through and see, oh, you do offer this service, you know, you do offer allergy services, how do I get in contact with you then? 
Here's that same example of, of a fat footer for Broadway Oaks Animal Hospital. They also have their Facebook page down here as a means of communication. We've got their credentials, the phone number, address, and all of the hours. This map is just a Google map as well. So in general, that will also show um, your reviews and directions to the hospital as well. And here's that texture I was mentioning once again, where you can see that fur there at the bottom, which is a pretty neat touch. The last element is how, and that's how clients should get in touch with you. And this is more of an internal discussion that you'll want to have as a clinic. Do you want them primarily to pick up the phone, which is the majority of what we see? Do you want them to give you an email? Do you want an appointment request form? Are all of these equally important to you? And there's a way that you can add that hierarchy in your website as well. No matter what the most important is, you want to make sure that these are easily accessible. So that way it's one click away from getting in touch with you. Going back to the West Oaks example, you'll see that we've got a contact bar here, which if you click on that, that takes you down to that fat footer that we reviewed. But also on the home page, we have an additional spot where that contact information is located. Phone number, address, and email, as well as all of their social media icons. All of this information, especially your phone number, should be easily accessible and clickable is another great aspect here. This is especially important as you start to have more mobile visitors because rather than having to copy and paste or write down a phone number, they just have to click on that phone number and they'll be put in touch with you. Um, here's another example of South Care and that kind of top of the page contact information that again is clickable. Up here, rather than some of the other hospitals, they just included the city, state, and zip code, which for a lot of you know, visiting clients is enough for them to know that that's, yeah, I wanna read more because that's in my area. We don't have to have the full address up there. Um, if you do click on that, that does open up a map, map link as well, and their phone number is clickable. The same for Broadway Oaks, only they do have their full address listed, um, some social media there, and the phone number. And again, all are clickable for ease of access. So the next step is, once you have the building blocks in place, these who, what, when, where, why, um, what other tips and tricks should you keep in mind? Well, gone are the days of very long websites. It used to be that websites were 20 or so pages, and that is no longer the case. You want to make sure that you have these basic questions answered and that pages are no more than 300 words. These should be small, easily digestible bites for clients. Your website should be easy to navigate. You can keep things, things simple. Um, another thing to keep in mind too is kind of what belongs on the website. If you have a blog, that's a great place for educational materials, but otherwise it's a great idea to kind of think of your website, again, as that digital lobby, so that way it draws clients in, they get the information they're looking for quickly, and they can get additional information from you should the need arise. Another thing as we kind of talked about those who's, uh, using personal photography and videos is a great way to add that personal touch and tell your story in a visual way. So all of that said, what should you be looking for when you're looking for a website provider? The first thing is a responsive design. And this is something that you can kind of take into practice at home and I'll show you how to do that. Responsive website just means that the website itself adjusts the content based on the screen size you're viewing it on. So that website may look a little different on a tablet, a mobile phone, a desktop, or even, you know, depending on the window size, it may look different from computer to computer. And that's okay, it just means that it's going to be an optimal user experience no matter what size screen you're viewing the website on. So a real-time example of this is to bring up any of the examples that we're gonna view in this presentation. Um, and you can actually, in your desktop, bring those up and adjust the window size itself and kind of watch in real time as that content readjusts itself. It's really neat to watch. And a responsive design is especially important, again, for those mobile users. Usually that phone number is gonna be before you even have to scroll, so that way it's one click away from getting in touch with you. Gone are the days where we have kind of a design for mobile and then a desktop design. It should be responsive, that way it doesn't matter who's coming to your website, on what device, they're able to find what they need. Another kind of hot button issue right now is that your website should be ADA compliant. Now, you'll be hearing a lot about this. Um, I think government websites actually just had 
their deadline passed that they needed to be ADA compliant. And there's not an exact outline for compliance here when it comes to personal entity websites. At Beyond Indigo, we do comply with all of the WCAG 2.0 guidelines for website development. Um, your website provider should be able to tell you whether or not your website is compliant. There are tools for this. An easy way to check um, if a website is ADA compliant is to try to use your tab in lieu of your mouse. And what that'll do is kind of tab through all of the clickable elements on a page without using your mouse. And I'll show you a real example of kind of what it looks like when a site is ADA compliant as well. But we're back to West Oaks and you may have noticed in the beginning that we've got kind of this little access button in the lower right hand corner. I wanted to show you what that does if we click on that. As you can see, if we click on that access button, an ADA compliant website, um, it removes kind of the background noise and colors. Um, so that way it facilitates, like I said, that kind of tabbing motion versus utilizing a mouse. And this is just the home page that I utilized here. I'm gonna scroll to, as if we were scrolling down the page, you see that you'd be able to skip from schedule an appointment, to in-house refills, to online pharmacy, just using that tab button. Now, this portion is not necessary is not necessary to having um, a website be ADA compliant. It does not need to look like this, but as this becomes more of a hot button issue, you'll see more and more websites being designed this way with that uh, kind of easy button to use. Um, another aspect that's really important on your website is custom and unique content. And we talked a little bit about this because it showcases who you are, gives the who of things. It provides a means to give clients really personalized information. You are different from the client, you know, the hospital next door. You are different from um, the hospital that's down the street. Every hospital is different and you wanna make sure that you're giving unique content to your clients. In addition, there's a more practical reason that you don't want duplicate content on your site. And that is that Google does not like duplicate content and that it can actually impact your uh, search rankings if it is determining that you have duplicate content. And I mention this because there are um, some website providers that do use kind of canned or reused content on their sites. And that's a big no-no. So you wanna make sure that you're getting some custom unique content that's been written for you. Here's an example of what that looks like on West Stokes uh, website. In their vaccine section, you can see, as I mentioned, every hospital's different. And in Texas, the rabies vaccine is the only one that is mandated by law. So Dr. John gives some information about what the law is and then also what he recommends so that way clients know kind of what to expect going in. The same thing on self care here. Um, they are in Spokane, but it looks like heartworm is not endemic to the area. So they kind of go into who they recommend have heartworm preventatives, um, and that's pets that travel. But I'm sure that you can think of several examples in your head right now of things that you would want your clients to know that may not be included with another hospital's content. So all the more reason to make sure it's created just for you. And what other questions should you ask of a potential website provider? The first is, do you have a portfolio I can see? That'll give you a good idea of kind of how their sites are designed, if they have some tones that match what you're looking for, and of course, the quality of their work. The second is going back to content. Who owns that content? With some website providers, that content belongs to them rather than to you. So if you were to try to, down the road, find a new provider, you'd have to be looking at all new content. So you wanna make sure that that's under your ownership. The same goes for design, unfortunately. So it's a good idea to make sure that if you ever were to leave your design, your website provider, that that design and that content are bottled up as files for you that you own. The next is, what access do I have for changes? We all know that things are quick to change in a veterinary hospital, whether that's new hours, a new um, provider, um, maybe a new vaccine that you'd like to talk to clients about, like a rattlesnake vaccine, um, and you'd like to add that to your website. What is that like? What access do you have? At Beyond Indigo, we have uh, both some tools that allow clients to go in independently and adjust certain content on certain pages, but we also have a help desk where you submit a ticket, our help team gets back to you within 48 hours about making that change. Which brings me to kind of my next question for a potential website provider. It's important that you know what that technical support process is like. Is it a phone number? Is it an email? Is it a ticket? And what is that response time like on their end? 
And finally, you wanna make sure that you have a good understanding of what your service fees each month include. And that was kind of my website's 101 presentation for you. I'm sure that I have lots more information I could share if we do get into 202. So I'd like to welcome questions at this time, and I'm also gonna pull up the examples that we used in case you'd like to pull those up on your own screen. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. Yeah, um, if anyone has any questions, now's the time to ask them. Just put them in the Q&A section of the Zoom webinar display. Um, the question I have for you, Rachel, is, um, first of all, this was a lot of great information, but if, if someone were to come to this presentation or watch the recording later and say, okay, great, I need a new webinar, I need a new website, um, but it sounds like there's a lot that needs to be done, what are, what's like the one or two tips that you would say that you could direct someone towards right out of the gate? Right out of the gate, I would look at kind of reducing content. That tends to be something that a lot of folks um, have issues with. I'd first look at your homepage and make sure that that, con that uh, contact information is high, clickable, and accessible, and that there's not so much information on your homepage that folks are having to kind of wade through the information that they need to get to. A uh, question here is, do you offer an analysis of a clinic's current websites? I believe we do, is that correct, Will? Yeah, I can actually answer on that one. Uh, absolutely, especially during um, the um, consultation stage before we at Beyond Indigo do any website pitches to any practice, what we do is we go over all of their digital marketing assets, which includes their website, their social media page, how they're pulling up in search, whether their existing copy is duplicated, um, all of those different assets, and we determine what is the uh, the appropriate um, course of action to take. So, for example, um, if a clinic already has great photographs and great branding, um, but their website is out of date or is not meeting current like um, um, ADA, Americans with Disability Acts, or other coding um, requirements, we'll talk to them about a new website that matches the size of their business because all webs you know not all websites need to be the exact same size for different businesses um, but carrying over some of those good existing assets so if their logo is great and they've got great photographs we'll we'll take those assets and put them into a new site so absolutely um, we think that a good um, uh, website developer should always always look at the metrics look at the numbers and look at the goals before um, before you know writing their first bit of text or designing uh, their first page hope that answered the question thanks will any other questions for us today looks like that might be it for questions so um yeah at this time i want to thank you so much rachel um i see you've got your information here on the screen I sure do, and please do not hesitate to reach out if you'd like to learn more. We are always happy to help. You can either visit our website at beyondindigopets.com or email me directly at rachel at beyondindigo.com. But thank you so much for sharing some time with me this morning. Absolutely. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, MWI, and thank you for all of today's attendees. Um, the next session is going to be Online Reviews 101 on Thursday, November 15th at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And to answer that previous question about um, consultations, if you go to beyondindigopets.com, there is a section there um, where you can reach out to one of our team members and we'll set up a, a consultation with you. Thank you so much.